Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin went to UCLA to give a talk about the economy and economics. And some of the students were not in favor of his appearance or the fact that he was giving this talk. In fact, there were protesters outside who were handing out some literature that was against Mnuchin. And then as you can probably predict, some of the students spoke out as he was trying to speak to the audience. Now we have two videos to give you an example of this, but before we get to those videos, I want to give you another important portion of this story, which is the fact that Mnuchin reached out to UCLA and essentially told the administrators that he is rescinding his agreement to allow the video of the talk to be posted online. So UCLA as an institution will not post it. In fact, UCLA, let's go back to that graphic. UCLA spokeswoman Peggy McInerney wrote, in an email that Mnuchin has retracted his permission for the Burkle Center to post its video and podcast of yesterday's event on its website. So we are unable to share either recording with you. Well, um, the students made recordings of their own and we are about to show you what those recordings are right now. Take a look. It wasn't black people and brown people in the inner cities who did this, and yet you are punishing them for being in that position. You are punishing them. So you know, it's it's kind of hard to pay attention to what they're saying, but you know, they're pretty informed students, and they're arguing about how the tax bill, actually tax law now, negatively impacts the poor, particularly minority communities, and so they have legitimate concerns. But I'm not sure this is the best way to handle it. Because yeah. it's it's easy for people to dismiss you and make it seem as though you have no legitimate points when you go about it this way. And I don't want to be too hard on the students because I, I think they're smart and I think they have good points and they want to be heard and they're frustrated and they're angry. But I, I, I want to go about it in a strategy that'll be more effective. So. Yeah, so I have mixed feelings. Look, I love that we hold people in power accountable. And, and I, my hybrid approach here is, Protest in some way that allows them to speak, whether it's you, you know, you say something in the beginning and then stop, or you turn your back to them, or whatever it might be. So I don't want to not protest them, and they're making perfectly good points. But but at some point we have to let them speak, and it does put the cops and they handled it, I think, okay there. Mm-hmm. But in a tough position where they've got to physically take you out of the room, otherwise he can't speak, and then we haven't heard him. Uh, and look, I, I think the tax law is horrific. I agree with the students. I think their points are well taken. Uh, I think Mnuch is a clown. Uh, he also complained about the the host, uh, who's the host of Marketplace Radio Program, Kai Rizdal, and said that he's biased. So what? Unless someone agrees with you and thinks that the tax cuts should go mainly to the rich, that they're biased. No, he's asking you questions, right? Right. I mean, so, so Mnuchin would have complained about everything and did complain about everything. Right, so I actually was on a panel at UCLA last year, actually about a year ago. And the two professors that I was on that panel with were not progressives at all. And it was great, it was a great conversation. I mean, we disagreed quite a bit and it was kind of sad to see these educated men make some of the points that they made. But it, does, it doesn't matter, we're having a conversation. And even if people disagreed with me or disagreed with those professors, I wouldn't want anyone to disrupt that conversation. There was a Q&A portion of it, which I think is a great opportunity to ask the tough questions and call them out, you know, call them out. Let them speak and during the Q&A, you know, say what you need to say, make the comments you need to make, and then ask the tough questions. I think that that will allow for a situation where people will take you seriously and you get that message across effectively. And and look, I think about it in my own context as well. When, when I was at Politicon, I was invited on one of the panels and it was about 
how conservatives can appeal to millennials. And the audience was full of conservatives. Everyone on that panel, with the exception of maybe one person, were very conservative. And they wouldn't let me talk. They yeah. just would not let me talk. And it was incredibly frustrating. So I wouldn't want anyone else with a different political ideology to deal with that either. I, I hear the conservatives are for freedom of speech, though. That's kind of weird. Yeah. It's important, especially on a college campus, to have an exchange of ideas. Even if you're absolutely convinced that, that you're right, and I'm convinced that you're right, uh, and I and I have the facts to back it up, that tax bill, in case you're actually concerned about the substance of it, um, everybody in the top 1% gets over a $50,000 tax break on average. And after uh, 2027, everyone making less than $75,000 gets their taxes increased. So it is redistribution of wealth to the top. So their points about the bill were fantastic, but then you also partly turn them into a victim, and it's just it doesn't help. It really, really doesn't help. Just let let him say the absurd points that he's going to make. Counter those points. Yes, that's very important. But I, I keep I keep saying it. We've been consistent on it all along. Let him speak. Yeah. Uh, but if he did want freedom of speech, by the way, it is also slightly ironic that he's now banning the video of his own speech. I know, it's kind of amazing. I, I would argue that releasing the full video would actually be better. Yeah. Because then at least people can see the full context of what's going on as opposed to what some of the students are posting.